thank you. Apologies for the digital um, issues before. Um, mixture of cable and uh, computers, I think. So we're here now, so that's grand. Um, lovely to be here um, and to talk to you about our work within Historic Environment Scotland um, in looking after the properties within our care. I'm Head of Estates, so my job is one of the best, I think. Um, I have the privilege of looking after all 336 properties that we look after on behalf of Scottish ministers. These range from everything from uh, the iconic that everyone will have seen, um, to the picture postcard, no apologies for the Scottish tourist bit here, um, all the way through to the fairy tale castles uh, down in the borders, this is one in Dumfries and Galloway, um, to the really remote sites um, that I love getting to go and see, um, big highlight of the job, um, to our standing stones, to our rock art, to what some of my team refer to affectionately as our lumps and bumps. Now, for archaeologists, maybe I'm not allowed to say that, but uh, they're a fantastic set of monuments. And our portfolio splits down almost into three or thirds. We have roofed and roofed buildings, um, which are about a third of our estate. Then we have unroofed buildings with quite high level walls flapping in the wind. And then we have um, our standing stones, carved stones, um, and archaeological features across the country. We also look after uh, the visitor facing facilities, um, all our decos. Uh, we have a direct labour force um, of about 400, which I'm in charge of. So we look after 27 decos across the country, um, all our operations, all our car parks, landscapes, cafes, um, roads, and paths uh, that provide the access to these wonderful monuments. So it's not just the monuments, it's the infrastructure and the ME facilities uh, associated with them. I've got quite a lot of data um, in various formats, I would suggest. Not all of it uh, digital, as you can imagine. A lot of it uh, sitting in people's drawers. Um, a lot of it sitting uh, in works managers' offices up and down the country. Some of the, my most exciting uh, bits of paper that I've found over the last three years of being in post have been workmen's diaries dating back to the 1950s where the works managers on each of our sites have been recording what they've been doing at the sites on a weekly basis. So that's the sort of granularity of information that I'm dealing with. I've also got some fantastic uh, digital data now as well. Our digital scan teams um, have been doing a lot of 3D laser scanning. Um, this is Tantalum Castle uh, out on East Lothian, about 25 miles from here, if anyone wants to be day trip after the conference tomorrow. Fantastic monument. Um, and all this data is great, it's really interesting to have it, but how does it help me as an asset manager and as an architect leading a team of professionals make decisions? And really for me the only thing that's important is the useful information within that data. And how do I find that out so that I can actually start to understand, to plan and deliver the works for our properties? huge digital ecosystem that I have a vision of creating um, where almost we look at digital twins for our monuments so that there is there's a digital version of the actual physical monument and how we get to that point for all 336 um, will be quite interesting and how we combine everything so it's not just the building information it's all the associated information with the properties so everything from their history uh, to what's below the ground, to what's around the ground, um, to what's there, pulling that into this common data environment where we can all start to talk to each other. And that's where PCAMS comes in. Uh, this is our new digital asset management system for the properties in care. Um, and it's linking all the different data sets that exist, both within conservation, then within the organisation, and then the wider data sets. So really interested in some of the rock art stuff today and trying to link all that through. Maybe to look at some of uh, different data sets out there in terms of stone. British Geological Survey have a huge stone database. I'm really interested in knowing what stone Stirling Castle is built with, for example, where it's from, 
what, what quarry was it from? And how could I source that if I was wanting to actually use some of that stone in the future? We have a project ongoing called the Ray Project at the moment, which is looking to digitise all 336 assets um, within our care. And that really is a big programme. Um, we're about a third of the way through it, and we've had some fantastic um, results from that. Millimetre accuracy um, on these laser scans. Starting to help us understand the monuments and understanding their needs and their vulnerabilities. I think climate change is a real risk for us. It is happening. Um, and we need to be monitoring coastal erosion, flooding, um, and decay of stonework. All those natural mechanisms that happen. If we understand it, we'll hopefully be able to start to do something about it. Um, my colleague David Harkin is going to speak to you tomorrow about um, our methodology that we've developed for climate change assessment. And a lot of this is based on GIS um, and looking at seven different types of flooding and how each of our monuments are at risk and actually putting a risk rating across all the monuments across the country. So as I know that which ones are at a higher risk in terms of climate change and then I can start to look at mitigating those impacts. Technical information. We have started to combine a lot of our data sets this is Skelmerley Isle uh, near Larks, next to a really fantastic ice cream shop, if you're ever up there. Um, and we're starting here to look at putting in some of the different data sets to do with moisture monitoring of the crypt, um, where we have a bit of a damp problem down, down in the crypt, and actually trying to understand where the issues are and where those technical challenges are. So by overlaying the scan data, with the microwave uh, moisture monitoring data, we're able to start to build up a picture where we can actually start to identify the problems a bit better. And then understanding the condition, I think every, every good uh, condition survey should be the basis of what you're doing to that monument. Um, and we have a programme of condition surveys for all our sites. And this is a new tool that we've developed in partnership with British Geological Survey. And Nikki Smith, who's in the audience this afternoon, is going to talk to you about this tomorrow as well in a lot more detail. Um, BGS Sigma is a system that has been going for 15, 16 years, um, where they have used it to map geological um, and rock uh, surveys across the country. We wanted to develop it in conjunction with them to develop condition for historic buildings. So we're using the coding and then we've designed the front end. And it's been a really interesting project. Um, really interested to hear the, the previous speaker talk about threats. And a lot of my team have felt quite threatened that the computer was going to take over the condition survey. I'm like, no, no, this is just the tool to help you do it. And it's proved to be a really fantastic tool. We've now been using it for about a year and a half um, in the field. Um, and it's allowed us to bring in lots of different GIS layers and start to pair the data and then start to overlay that with monument observation points where we actually attribute numerical values to condition based on urgency and risk. And we have a value for all of these elemental um, condition elements and then they're tallied up so we end up with a monument condition indicator as well. And that allows me to start to compare the condition between monuments and within the monument, which is actually really, really interesting. The tool allows you to take photos, to do scribbles, uh, to do some drawings um, out in the field, and also to capture um, what the condition of the element is. So come back and hear Nikki tell more about that uh, tomorrow. It starts to allow us then to plan our work, because after you understand it, you need to work out what you're going to do. So, by having the, the condition mapped on a GIS layer, it's on a risk basis, so the highest ones are red, and they're covered in red, uh, the next ones are orange, and they're covered in orange, and then you have the yellow ones um, as well. And that allows me to start to articulate the needs of the monument. 
So we come up with these red, orange, yellow diagrams, ROI diagrams, very technical. Um, but they're actually really helpful for people who don't understand drawings or people who, you know, I'm going to ask for money from who don't really understand what Bothwell Castle here might need. And I'm able to say, well, the red bits are the bits that are the most urgent and here's the five-year programme for these works. So it's starting to help us to prioritise investment and actually prove that where we are saying we need the money is linked back to physical, actual, hard data. And you're actually able to articulate the need between condition and investment, which we've never really been able to articulate in this way before. So that's really exciting and has actually been really helpful in terms of getting the money. Again, how we plan and use the information. Uh, this is Sweetheart Abbey uh, down in De Priest and Galloway. And this is using photogrammetry um, mixed with AutoCAD to actually use uh, some of the technology to better understand and better actually show the people who are carrying out the works on the site and some of the regulators as well when we're looking at SMC consents and what have you. Um, really useful um, information. Um, and the technician here has actually put on scaffold lifts on his drawing, which I think is really, really sensible. Um, and I was on the scaffold a couple of weeks back and the guys on site were actually using this and you know, really marking and recording the work they're now carrying out uh, digitally, which is a big step forward. BIM, we've touched on BIM before and uh, a lot of what the previous speaker spoke about BIM resonated with me. Um, building information management um, is really what I would say it should be called, uh, where building is a verb. Um, and I think that is big issue within the industry in terms of what BIM actually means. Um, we've been carrying out four different BIM pilots. Um, you can have a look on the Scottish Futures Trust website, there's some Pathfinder projects in there and we're very keen to develop these with Scottish Futures Trust for the sector because a lot of what's going on in the BIM for Heritage world, um, and we sit on that national body um, that meets every couple of months, really interesting as to where we're going and what, what we're actually going to be doing in terms of classifications um, and in terms of uniclass and all that sort of non literature and how you actually structure the data that sits behind that portal. Um, really, really important. Then for us, we're looking at uh, asset management uses and also project delivery. Um, I'm determined that uh, it's not just going to be for the big ones. Um, we have the model for Edinburgh Castle, which again you can imagine in terms of facilities management, um, recording where services are within the building. I have a regional works manager who's about to retire very soon and I've got like 35 years worth of experience in his brain. I just want to download it into my BIM model. I um, have about three weeks left to do it, so I'm not quite sure how to do it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's where are those hidden services? I don't want to be ripping panels off the Great Hall, but somebody knows where that cable is and, and how we can start to use that information within a digital twin of Edinburgh Castle. But if I can get BIM to work for a standing stone, I think we've done something really exciting. Um, we've heard about how it could work for ships and boats and historic assets there. There's nothing to stop us doing this. And does it have to be the Revit model? I think everyone's very hung up on creating a model out of the point cloud. Can we not just attribute the information to the point cloud? We've been looking at uh, using the mesh and trying to hang some data off that. What is the metadata that we're actually putting in here? Is it about the stone type? Is it about when previous repairs have been carried out? Is it about structural stability, there's so much information that we could attribute to the point cloud directly. So this is another of the really exciting uh, pilot studies that are going on. And then visualisation in VR. Uh, this is a photo of our chief exec uh, taking a walk around the proposed uh, upgraded cafe at Stirling Castle. And he was actually able to experience uh, the space um, as it would be um, when it would be built. And that's a really, really exciting use for project delivery. So how do I get from this to this? 
And I think very much it's all about change. And in my experience, people always have some sort of allergic reaction to change. Um, there's, just, there's a spectrum, a broad spectrum. Some people just, oh, whatever, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll sort that out tomorrow. Next week, that'll be grand. And then there's the almost anaphylactic shock <laughs> reaction to change. And it's very much um, in my head about the people, first and foremost. You will not be able to implement any of this wonderful technology um, without getting the people, the process and the technology aligned. And I think, if anything, I've learned on our um, digital experience over the last two, three years, it's been trying to get these in some sort of balance. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of this technology is fantastic. It is a tool. A lot of people still feel really threatened by it and that it will replace their professionalism. It's not just archaeologists, trust me. Architects, QSs, structural engineers, you name it. Everybody feels like, ooh, ooh, ooh. So I think very much I feel we do have a digital future for our historic assets. I'm really excited about implementing that um, across our portfolio and uh, really happy to take any questions or talk to anybody further if there's anything that uh, you'd like to take forward with us. Thank you.